qua được bên này chỗ này The M2 flamethrower. It served American forces in World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. In most theaters, flamethrowers were specialty weapons with limited and specific use. They were most commonly seen amongst combat engineer units and troops of the Chemical Warfare Service. On film, they show up in a handful of war movies, but have come to dominate the horror movie genre and often pop up in the hands of evil doers, adding to their reputation as cruel weapons of war. So let's take a look at how this weapon was used, and as always, feature some of the productions it shows up in. All right, that's too hot. Anything we can do about that heat? Me, it's a flamethrower. The first modern use of the flamethrower was during World War I. Germany began successfully using them in 1915 against the French and British. The British and French would also adopt the flamethrower in limited numbers, but it was the German army who really pioneered its use using them in over 650 attacks until the end of the war, with mixed success. These were cumbersome devices, with a range under 20 meters. By the end of World War I, infantry developed tactics to counter flamethrowers. They learned their limited range and became quick to identify them as priority targets. During World War I and the interwar years, the American military gave little weight to the flamethrower, but once they started analyzing tactics used at the start of World War II, particularly reports of German success with the weapon, America quickly adopted a flamethrower program. Since then, many improvements have been made in the efficiency of these implements. Our pictures give an impressive indication of their destructive possibilities. In 1942, the U.S. Army introduced the M1A1 flamethrower, first used successfully in combat at Guadalcanal in January of 1943. At first, flamethrowers in World War II used mixtures of oil, gasoline, and diesel fuel. Nitrogen was typically used as the propellant. Early fuels burnt rapidly, mostly consumed just beyond the nozzle. This meant the operator had to approach to within close to the target to have any effect. In 1942, the Chemical Warfare Service greatly improved flamethrowers by thickening gasoline, turning it into a gel becoming napalm. This improved the range and tightened the flame stream, making them safer for troops in proximity of these weapons. The compact stream was also capable of ricocheting off of and into openings, and subsequently sticking to flat surfaces. On film, you'll mostly see gasoline or propane flamethrowers being used, as napalm is extremely dangerous and hard to extinguish. Flamethrowers would adapt around the new revolutionary fuel. M1s and M2s, adapted for napalm, allowed fire to be thrown at pillboxes up to 45 meters away, with 50% of the charge reaching into the structure. Original M1s, using a traditional fuel mix, when hitting a pillbox 18 meters away, would burn away 90% of the charge before even hitting the target. You gotta be fucking kidding. The majority of flamethrowers seen on film are M2s, but both M1s and M2s were used during the war. The M2 offered improved reliability and a better ignition system. The standardization of napalm remained the biggest improvement to the weapon system during the war. In the summer of 1944, M2 flamethrowers started making it to the front lines. M2 variants would be in service with the American Army between 1944 and 1978, with around 14,000 produced. They could fire almost 2 liters or half a gallon of napalm a second, meaning burn time was only about 7 to 10 seconds, so they needed to be used tactically, protected until a bunker needed to be cleared, or used to clear away jungle or structures. Flamethrowers were limited to 2 to 15 flame bursts, depending on range.
The movies do a decent job at portraying how flamethrowers were used. Some were used at Normandy, but they were heavy and often left right on the beach. The Pacific is where they were most popular, and like in the movies, flamethrowers were definitely targeted. However, one movie cliché, the flamethrower's risk of being hit by enemy gunfire and turning into a fireball, is grossly exaggerated. The fuel inside a flamethrower is often difficult to ignite, which is why a built-in magnesium igniter is used. The gas pressurizing the tanks is also non-flammable. The most likely outcome of having a tank struck by a direct hit from a non-incendiary round is that the operator could be knocked off their feet from a release of pressure from the tank. Okay, burn them out. Flamethrowers are often shown on film turning people into fireballs, but what is not shown and equally horrible is that flamethrowers often kill through asphyxiation, after burning up all the oxygen in a bunker or cave. Sometimes a bunker would be cleared after being torched, and all the occupants would appear seemingly untouched. Military-grade flamethrowers were only used against caves or dwellings from the outside firing in. Using them in a confined space could suffocate the user and expose them to lethal carbon monoxide. By the end of World War II, flamethrower devices were being used more and more on vehicles and tanks, and less by men carrying them on their back. Flamethrowers were used on a variety of different tanks, such as the British Crocodile Tank, a modified Churchill. It was simply safer and more practical. Tanks could also fire at much greater distances, while soldiers waited behind them for fortifications to be cleared. Come on, come on, open up! After World War II, flamethrowers were used more for clearing terrain, with the army introducing a host of other options for setting things on fire, using incendiary munitions. One of Hollywood's favorite examples is the M202 Flash, which could launch incendiary rockets. Even with its size, it was significantly lighter than an M2 flamethrower, and could fire up to a maximum range of 750 meters. Though World War II flamethrowers were an imperfect specialty weapon, awkward and bulky, they did have some impact. Woody Williams, a United States Marine, earned the Medal of Honor clearing seven pillboxes at Iwo Jima with a flamethrower. However, today the flamethrower is seen largely as an outmoded weapon in most militaries, with its use in warfare both legally and tactically questioned. Ultimately, burning or suffocating other men at short ranges is horrific for both sides. The men who were burdened to wear flamethrowers in World War II took on tremendous risk, no doubt including their mental health. Any future use of a flamethrower will likely continue to be for clearing terrain. You okay? All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on the M2 flamethrower. As always, if you have any experience, insight, or stories around this interesting weapon, please share in the comments section, and we'll see you in the next video.